And these four graphs, not only are we varying the weights in the same way that we did last time. So we have a weight of one here and 0.5 here and minus 0.5 and minus one. So we are varying the weights in each of these graphs, but now we're also varying the biases. So if we look here on the top right-hand corner, this is the example that we just went through. But if we zoom in, then we can quickly check out the other examples. So here we have a weight of one, and now we have a bias that has been set to two. So if we were to pass in an input of two, multiply that by our weight of one, that's going to give us two. And then we add our bias term of two in this case, and that's going to give us an output value for our hidden node of four for our input of two. So if we zoom back out, we won't go through all of these examples again, but we can get the point that we can vary both the weight and the bias term, and that's going to influence the graph of the output. So we've already discussed how the weight determines the slope of the output line. And now we should also be able to see that the bias term determines the y-intercept of the line. So when we vary the weight, we're able to change the slope in the direction of the line of the output. And when we vary the bias term, we're able to change where on the y-axis the line intercepts it. 